Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. I'm Dr. Harper. This video is on worked problems process control charts for the P, C, M, and R charts with Excel. The objective of the statistical process control chart is to monitor a quality characteristic over time to control a process. The workflow is conduct an experiment to estimate the parameters, construct the chart, and use the chart to monitor the process and control the process. But this video will only estimate parameters and construct the chart. This video will not describe how to conduct the experiment or the experimental designs or how the charts are used to monitor the process or control the process. This video will also not describe the underlying assumptions for each of the charts that would be needed to know how and when to use the charts or interpret the charts. That will be the subject of other videos in the Harper Classroom. The structure of the chart is the center line is the mean, and the upper and lower control limits are the mean plus or minus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean. So the parameters we're estimating are the mean and the variance of the mean. And the square root of the variance of the mean is the same as the standard deviation of the mean. The four charts we will look at is the p-chart, which monitors the proportion of an attribute quality characteristic, the C chart, which monitors the count of an attribute quality characteristic, the M chart, which monitors the mean of a variable quality characteristic, and the R chart, which monitors the range of a variable quality characteristic. So now, let's look at the P chart. For the P chart, from the experiment, the total observations, capital N, is 51,400, and the attributes from the experiment is 1080, which is x. To determine the proportion, it's just x over n, 1080 divided by 51,400, which is approximately 0.021, or 2.1%. Now for the chart, the sample size, which is a small n, 1285, and that's given, and the mean, which is p, 0.021, is the estimate of the proportion. The variance, which is p times 1 minus p over n, is calculated here, where it's approximately 0.000016. Now for the chart, the center line is just the p, which is 0.021, and the mean. The upper and lower control limits are p plus or minus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean. 0.021 plus or minus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean, which is given up here. So the upper control limit, which is a plus, is 0 0.033. The lower control limit, which is a minus, is 0 0.009. Now these will define the upper and lower control limit and the center line of the p-chart. So now, let's see how this is done in Excel. I've already typed in the values that are given, the n, x, and n, from the experiment and for the chart. Now for the proportion, that's just going to equal our x divided by the number of observations in our experiment. So the mean is just going to be our proportion, and the variance of the mean equals our p times 1 minus p divided by the sample size for our chart. Now, for our chart, that equals our mean plus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean. Our center line is just our mean. And the lower control limit equals our mean minus 3 times the square root of the variance of our mean. And there's our control chart. And we can see that's the control chart that we have. And that's the p-chart. So now, let's look at the c-chart. From the experiment, the total number of observations the capital N is 20,000. The number of attributes x is 40. Again, the proportion is x over n. 40 over 20,000 is 0 0.002, or 0.2 percent. Now for the chart, the sample size is given to be a small n, which is 850. And the mean this time is n times p, 850 times 0 0.002 or 1.7. And the variance for the c-chart is the same as the mean, which is 1.7.
Now for the chart, the center line is the mean, which is 1.7. And the upper control limit is the mean plus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean, or 1.7 plus 3 times the square root of 1.7, or 5.6. Now for the lower control limit, it's the mean minus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean. 1.7 minus 3 times the square root of 1.7. And this turns out to be a minus 2.2. But a minus value is always replaced with a zero because the P chart and the C chart can never have a lower control limit which is less than zero. These values can define the C chart which is 5.6, 1.7, and zero. So now let's see how this is done in Excel. I've already typed in the values that are given. From the experiment, the total observations, capital N of 20,000 and attributes X of 40. And for the chart, the sample size, small n of 850. Now for the proportion, that's going to equal X divided by capital N. So from the experiment, there's the estimate of our proportion. Now for the mean, that equals small n times our P. And the variance of the mean is the same, n times P. Now for the upper control limit, that equals our center line, which is our mean, which is 1.7, plus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean, which is 1.7. The center line is the mean, which is 1.7, and the lower control limit is the mean minus 3 times the square root of the variance of the mean which is 1.7. And since this is negative, we will re replace that with a zero. And zero then becomes the lower control limit for the C chart. And we can see this is the same as what we determined before, 0, 1.7, and 5.6. So that's the C chart. Now, let's consider the M chart and the R chart. From the experiment, the sample size per sample, which is 8, which comes from this experimental design, and the grand mean is 200 and the average range is 40. Now the sample size per sample is used in a standard industry table to determine the coefficients A2, D3, and D4. So for a sample size of 8, we pull these coefficients off, and A2 is 0.373, D3 is 0.136, and D4 is 1.864. To calculate the M chart, the center line is just the grand mean of 200, and the upper and lower control limit is the grand mean plus or minus the A2 times the range. So we have 200 plus or minus 0.373, which is A2, times our range, which is 40. And so we have 214.92 is the upper control limit, and 185.08 is the lower control limit. To calculate the R chart, the center line is just the average range 40, and the upper control limit is the D4, which is 1.864 times the range, which is 74.56. The lower control limit is D3 times the range, which is 0.136 times 40, the average range, which is 5.44. Now these can define the upper and lower control limit for the M chart and the R chart. Now let's see how to do this in Excel. I've already copied the values from the experiment, sample size per sample of 8, grand mean of 200, average range of 40, and from the tables, A2, D3, and D4. Now for the M chart upper control limit, that's going to equal the grand mean plus a2 times the average range. The center line is just the grand mean, and the lower control limit equals the grand mean minus A2 times the average range. Now the upper control limit for the R chart equals D4 times the average range. The center line is just the average range, and the lower control limit equals D3 times the average range. So there's how you calculate the M chart and R chart with Excel. 
So that's the M chart in our chart. This ends the instructional video Worked Problems Process Control Charts for the PC M and R chart with Excel. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.